got a brand new uh, Basher, Bashar, I keep pronouncing that wrong, I'm sorry, uh, Bashar STA experiment to try. Um, I've installed in my bathroom here a larger plate antenna. It's 10 feet by 20 inches, giving you approximately 1.55 square meters of surface area. And um, this Danish experiment, experimenter had a much more modest plate antenna. He, he uh, took special care to connect using a brass nut, uh, the copper wire. Um, so the, the copper wire um, connects to brass and then the brass uh, attaches to the aluminum. So the copper and the aluminum don't touch each other. Uh, and that uh, prevents any galvanic response. Um, I don't know if that's important, but this Danish uh, experimenter thought it was, so I thought I'd uh, use that idea. Have this come down into the top of the Bashar STA hooked up in the two black and white coils are hooked up in parallel. Um, adding various capacitances here. Um, and then uh, to, me to measure things, to you know see how well we're doing, uh, with, with the scope, there's a mode you can put the scope in called XY mode. Uh, X or channel one will be connected to this very crude uh, secondary that I've, which is like about four turns, which I've wrapped around the center of the Bashar STA. So this will pick up the magnetic component that's happening here in terms of energy. And then uh, uh, the coil is sitting above a 250K ohm resistor, and we can measure the voltage across this resistor which will give us the uh, the up and down potential fluctuations um, at, at, that this coil is uh, is experiencing um, and we can put that on the Y channel um, and then by experimenting with different capacitances here uh, we can see if either the magnetic field increases or the energy pickup increases um, and but first I wanted to show you this uh, plate antenna I have. It's 10 feet long. It is uh, connected to the wall using nylon. Again, recommended by that Danish experimenter. Um, this thing, when you uh, when you touch it, it makes a huge amount of noise. So I realized this thing is an excellent earthquake detector. <laughs> because if my house started to vibrate, this thing would make a thunderous noise and wake me up. Um, so I'm interested in it for that reason as well. I'll, I'll show you. Climb up here. It makes a pretty big noise, so if I just shake it like this. So, a crude earthquake detector cost about $30 USD for this aluminum siding. Uh, now this is uh, mounted above my shower, which um, offers, offers an opportunity to uh, experiment with negative ions. If I um, turn on the shower, run it for a while, and then turn it off, the negative ions from the water as it evaporates will float up and hit the hit this plate capacitor. Um, so this is very much the uh, um, Pyramid of Giza notion of using water and capacitance. Uh, that bolt, if you can see, is a brass bolt. So the copper wire doesn't touch the aluminum, it touches the brass, and the brass touches the uh, copper wire and aluminum separately. <laughs> the yellow clip lead is the antenna coming in. Out the bottom here we can hook up to different capacitances. Right now I've hooked it up to a 10 microfarad cap which is just something I had conveniently. So this brings the frequency way down to the audio range like a 1000 something hertz. I can click even bigger capacitances on here for a total of like 70 um, microfarads, which brings me down to four in the 400 range, 400 hertz. Um, of course, Q drops significantly when, when you do that, and so um, 
uh, signals are damped. So one clip lead here is connected across a 250k ohm resistor. The other clip lead is connected to the four four rep second uh, primary or secondary, depending on which way you think about it. And here's what's happening on the scope. Um, so as as you recall, the X channel or the X amplitude here is what I'm picking up magnetically from this four rep thing, and the Y component is the the voltages experienced across that 250k ohm and clearly there's some reception going on here uh, of, of energy um, it's not it's down in the nano 90-ish uh, nano watt range so it's a small amount of power still so nothing significant but there is there is power here but it's nanowatts okay um, just to show you that this antenna does make a difference I will unclip this and you will notice that although the Y component uh, didn't drop very much, so here's the Y component. I'll, I'll put the antenna on and take it off. Y goes up and down. Oh, oh, if I touch it with my skin, it goes up even more. That's, that's the human capacitance, so I'll try not to do that. Um, it, the amplitude on the Y direction goes up a little bit but we see a much more significant increase in the X direction, which means the energy that we're pulling off of that antenna is mostly going into making a magnetic field within this great big coil, which kind of makes sense. So um, I think what this is pointing to is the energy levels that I'm playing with are way too small for this gigantic coil. And if I want to see anything dramatic happen, I need to, I need to be cranking in a lot more power to establish a lot huger magnetic field in here and then the question is does inductance respond in a non-linear way am I going to see inductance increase because of the flux that's being created uh, with all the power in this established in this magnetic field um, and certainly providing a better antenna like this uh, provides a little bit of an extra kick, but not very much. So um, we're, the X channel is um, make sure it's in the X, it's, it's in the 1X mode and we're uh, two millivolts per division. So this is a really small amount of energy being picked up from this for loop thing. Um, now, if I unclip the 10 microfarad capacitor that's in parallel with it, you'll notice that X goes way up. Well, not, not way up, though. It's, uh, so now we're 5 millivolts per division. So, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30 millivolts um, by removing that capacitor in parallel. Um, but again, the, uh, the Y direction didn't didn't change very much um, also the uh, the angle has slanted slightly implying there's a slight phase difference um, across, you know between X and Y now I'll also try putting a lot larger capacitance on here so this is 10 and now I'm going to add 60 for a total of 70 microfarads. That drops the frequency way down to 425 hertz as the resonant frequency. You'll notice the magnetic component, X, shrunk, but the, uh, the Y component increased. So I'm um, now seeing a larger voltage across the resistor, which is, uh, which if that was the so basically there's two ways to pull energy from this coil. One would be to pull it uh, magnetically like a transformer, which is the X component. And the other would be to atta attach to the bottom of the coil using the coil as sort of a band pass filter and then uh, peeling the energy out of the bottom of the coil. And that would be the Y component. 
So we did see Y increase by going even lower in fre frequency, which might point to uh, needing to go very low in frequency, um, like the Schumann resonances. Um, also, I'm doing this in the day uh, when the sun is out. It's, al it's uh, almost noon right now. Okay, I've worked out something that gives a little bit better uh, results. Um, here's the plate um, antenna. If you connect it to the bottom of the coil with nothing attached to the top of the coil, so the coil is also uh, incoming energy, uh, and if you um, connect these two together across a 250K ohm load, uh, then looking at these two in XY mode, um, one being the magnetic component, the other being the voltage induced across this resistor. Um, the These results are, pr are pretty good. Uh, I'll show you over here on the scope. Um, we've got a nice wide uh, amplitude here for the magnetic pickup across X. And the Y component is pretty decent as well. Um, and every once in a while you see this uh, pop up and, and stay larger. Uh, I'm going to uh, watch this for a while and try to capture that, but um, the energetics here uh, change every once in a while based on reception. Okay, it's uh, 325 Pacific Standard Time. The X component has dramatically increased. So I've been letting this thing run for a while and over uh, over time um, we've gotten a much larger uh, uh, magnetic field being created in the Bashar STA. I'm going to scale this down a little bit. Um, so basically X widened, widened out relative to the noon, noon hour. Or maybe it was because I just left, left this on so long. Two hours.